Hello everyone, uh, I'll be starting off with a very basic topic in plant physiology which is quite an important area for CSI and it, DBTGRF as well as gate examinations. And uh, this particular area everyone is familiar with called as plant growth regulators or PJRs. I am starting off with one very basic definition of the word PJR. They are small organic compounds synthesized by plant cells and tissues active at low concentrations can either promote or inhibit the plant growth and development. Now as far as their nature of being called a small organic compound is concerned, every PJR should be small in size so that it can easily diffuse from one part of the plant to another or let's say we also understand source and sink relationships where one part can synthesize certain uh, components and can send it towards other part called as the sink. Source and sink relationship are also usual in terms of photosynthate, but they can also transport the PJRs in phloem and xylem sap. Synthesized and applied by plant cells and tissues is another important area, where as compared to the word animal hormone, which are exclusively synthesized by the glands. You cannot utilize or use the word gland in this case. So they are synthesized by plant cells and tissues. The third point which is saying that they are active at low concentration, it's a point which is similar to the animal hormones. Every hormone can facilitate or bring about its action at a mere low concentration only, does not need to be synthesized in higher concentrations also. Then we have that PGRs can either promote or inhibit the plant growth and development. Yes, they can have promotory roles on the plant growth and development. They can also inhibit the growth and development as far as the stress hormones or stress response hormones like ethylene and ABA everyone is familiar with. So we will understand later on when we enter into the stress response hormones that stress response hormones are actually synthesized during stress. They do not result in plant stress. They are merely synthesized during stress and help the plant to overcome such stress response. Sponsors. We'll understand that thing later on. Now, as far as this definition of PGR is concerned, the very next immediate thing that we have, what is the classification or what are the major classes of PGR that we have? Initially, when plant physiology research was started, we were only having information about six main classes of PGRs that we are going to now list. So, the next thing that we need to understand is classes of PGRs. So there are six main classes of PJRs which are applicable till now and those classes are auxins, cytokinins, gibralins, ethylene, ABA or Epsisic acid and another class which is known as Brasinosteroids. So these are the six main PJRs which were being listed initially and uh, they are named as auxins, cytokinins, gibberlins, ethylene, ABA or Epsisic acid and Brasinosteroids. Now, uh, in part B CSR questions and also some of the interviews, it can be asked that why auxin and cytokinins, they form a unique class compared to other rest all PJRs. Now, auxins and cytokinins are extremely crucial for viability or survival of the embryo. So, they are extremely crucial for viability or the survival of the embryo. What do we mean by this thing? If there is any problem associated with the biosynthesis or signaling of the auxins and cytokinins that can ultimately result in a problem in the survival or viability of the embryo. So how does it distinguish auxin and cytokinin from the rest of the PGRs? The most important thing that we have is the remaining other hormones are required by the plant system for small developmental processes only. That means even if their biosynthesis is being blocked or signaling is being blocked, only certain responses can be stopped, but that will not hamper the survival or the viability of the embryo. So the next important thing that we have is, so rest PJRs, they are required for, required for small developmental processes only. So they are required for small, developmental process only 
right so they are utilized for small developmental processes only even if they are blocked in terms of biosynthesis or signaling then it will not hamper the survival or viability of the embryo the next thing that we need to understand when we started off with this classification we were early having knowledge of six pgrs only but later on we came to know that there are certain molecules which were earlier known to us as signaling molecules they are considered or they should be reclassified as PGRs. So our next thing which can be another important question is that what is the name of those signaling molecules which can be considered as PGR or which are considered as PGR in the literature. So uh, the next thing that we have is signaling molecules that act as PGR. So signaling molecules can act as PJRs. Now, as far as this thing is concerned, we have the naming of JA, we have the name of SA, and uh, we do have another name called as Strigolactone. So, uh, what does the word JA stand for? It stands for jasmonic acid. So, the word JA stands for jasmonic acid, SA stands for salicylic acid and strigolactone as the name indicates itself. They were earlier classified as uh, signaling molecules. We did not have any idea should we classify them or consider them as PJR. But at present, they are known to us as PJRs. Now the first two names that is uh, uh, JA and SA, right? So uh, JA and SA I will be dealing with later on also. But what important information that they play extremely crucial roles in the plant defense. Pathogens, herbivores, the defense system of plants is actually being triggered or it is a responsibility of jasmonic acid and salicylic acid. As far as strigolactone word is considered over here, the strigolactones will be once again coming in front of us for a very important response which is known as the epical dominance. In basic classes like class 11th uh, plant physiology, uh, NCRT has clearly mentioned that epical dominance is because of auxins. That is right, but auxin actually stimulates strigolactone and it is strigolactone which actually results in epical dominance. We will understand that thing, but that at today's level, auxins are not actually responsible for the epical dominance. It is actually the strigolactone which are going to result in this. So the last part of our introduction now which remains and can be asked as basic question that what could be the possible biosynthetic precursors which could ultimately help in synthesis of the PJRs. So the last part that we need to understand is the biosynthetic precursors. There can be direct questions based on this information. So the next thing that we need to understand is what can be the possible biosynthetic precursor. So biosynthetic precursors for PGR. Now uh, the first category that I am naming over here is the category number one called as amino acids. It is uh, quite a possibility that PGRs can be synthesized from amino acids. And we have example number one where it says that it is quite possible that tryptophan can also help in synthesis. And from tryptophan we have the synthesis of auxins that we will be understanding in our next chapter. And uh, from methionine amino acid, from the amino acid methionine, we have the uh, synthesis of ethylene. Right. I would also name one class uh, which is uh, second number called as there is one possibility that they can also be synthesized from lipids. So I would like to mention about the name of lipids and from lipids there is one example called as alpha linolenic acid and from alpha linolenic acid there is a synthesis of uh, jasmonic acid or JA jasmonic acid or J. But since these two pathways are there, we have not covered all PGRs, right? So amino acids may tryptophan say auxins, methionine say ethylene. From lipids, it is quite possibility that from alpha linolenic acid, jasmonic acid synthesis might happen. Now the third and the last pathway will be the most important one and it's the maximum branches which are coming out of that pathway means maximum PGRs are synthesized by the pathway number three. And that pathway number three is known as the isoprenoid pathway. So the third and the last possibility that we have is known as the isoprenoid pathway. 
Now, uh, as the name indicates, isoprenoid, this is based upon a term, basic term called as isoprene, and one isoprene has five carbon, meaning isoprenoid pathway relies on the synthesis of PGR based upon a building block called as isoprene, and one isoprene has how many carbon? Five carbons. Let me give you a basic example. Jibberlins have 20 carbon, they can be synthesized by joining of four isoprene because five carbon into four, that is 20 carbon, although there are n number of intermediates which will be coming in that pathway also. So, uh, as far as this particular thing is concerned and isoprenoid pathway, you will have to learn these initials G, C, A, B and S. These are important initials which will help us to understand the isoprenoid pathway. Over here G stands for the word gibberellins, the C stands for cytokinins, A stands for AB or abscisic acid, B for brassinosteroids and S for strigolactones. Now if you carefully understand this thing, this is one of the largest pathway for biosynthesis of the PGR that is Gibberlin, cytokine and ABA, brassinosteroid and strigolactone. We have covered almost everything. Auxins covered, cytokinins covered, ethylene, ABA, brassinosteroid, strigolactone, jasmonic acid. The only one thing which is remaining is salicylic acid. The pathway for synthesis of salicylic acid is still not known to us. There are a lot of doubts which are remaining and therefore most of the published literature will never be mentioning about the exact biosynthetic precursor of these strigolactones. So that's all for the introduction. We'll be soon. Uh, uh, understanding about the first PGR uh, which was also essentially the first PGR to be discovered and auxins will be our next chapter. Thank you.